Welcome back to Flex Your Head, another special episode of Scream Therapy. On Flex Your Head, we take a breather from punk rock and mental health and explore classic punk albums, which I guess is good for mental health. On this episode, we're joined by Drew once again. It's great to have you back, Drew. And we get to talk about an amazing album today, as all the Flex Your Head episodes are. So what album are we talking about today? We are talking about The Argument by Fugazi. So the argument is Fugazi's sixth and latest release. I say latest because there is chance that they could someday maybe get back and do more music. The argument came out back in 2001, so it's been quite a while since they were, they were active. And through uh, Discord Records, which has been their label all along, owned by Ian Mackay, who is the guitar player and singer in Fugazi. So we have Guy Picciotto on vocals and guitar. We have Ian Mackay on vocals, guitar, and piano on this album. We have Joe Lally on bass and vocals, and Brendan Canty on drums and piano. And we have some extra people on this album, which is really cool. Yeah, Jerry totally. Busher played drums and percussion. So there's some songs where there's two drummers, which is rad, and we'll talk about that in a sec. Yeah. Amy Dominguez played cello, and Kathy Wilcox and Bridget Cross, both of great bands themselves, Bikini Kill and Unrest, respectively, were on background vocals on a couple of songs. Yeah. What are your opening thoughts on this one? We've been talking about doing this for a while, and it's... It's finally here. <laughs> so, so, first quick fact about this album. This is the only Fugazi album where uh, Fugazi has a track where none of the original members play on. The intro is all just Amy playing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And apparently it was her just in the... Stu- Sorry, I'm just diving straight into this, but it's just her in the studio making weird noises on her um, on her cello. And uh, Guy was just like, like, no, more of that and do this. <laughs> How would do that again? And so they're just recording it. And then Brendan um, collaged it along with the radio static and then sort of handed it to her and was like, do you mind if we start the album with this? And she was like, yeah, of course, do that. scared me when you said it was <laughs> I was like what who else was in Fugazi that left what's going on <laughs> yeah. so so yeah it's, yeah it's weirdly I never thought uh, about it that way that's cool so Red Medicine came out in 95 and Hits came out in 98 and then you had um instrument soundtrack in 99 so this this album well would have been three years after and Hits mm-hmm. it definitely continues on from where and Hits left off it's way more multifaceted record I always felt like and Hits was a bit of a mixed bag of amazingness. I, I love Ant Hits, one of my favorite yeah. Fugazi records. But yeah, this one kind of pulls those ideas together more. Definitely think it's their most melodic, but at the same time, there's some songs that are super heavy on this, on the argument as well. Yeah. I probably come back to these songs more than I do any other Fugazi track. I probably listen to, to Waiting Room more, but Full Disclosure is probably one of my favorite songs. And, and like, or they come up probably more than any anything on my playlist. Yeah, I remember when I first heard this album, and it ends, and it really has a finality to it. Like it could almost be like, oh, is this the last Fugazi album? Is this the last Fugazi song? Argument, of course, is the last song on the album. But the thing yeah. is, I remember thinking that about End Hits as well, <laughs> and, and because and because the <laughs> right. title was End Hits, like you know, this is the last. Yeah. 
there's something about this album that does feel like a chapter of it, that it could end at this point. And I think, I don't know if the band had that in mind when they did it. I know that they were talking about taking a, a break, especially after the tour for this album in 2022. I was also listening to the Evens record today, especially um, Cash Out, I think. That really sounds like an Even song. Or you can kind of see where where uh, Ian's going with his songwriting. Mm-hmm. And that, yeah, I think Cash Out could have easily been an Even song. Yeah. Same sort of flow to the to the writing and, and whatnot. For sure. What a great song. <laughs> Such a good song. I see the progress in that, for sure. Let's just dive right into some songs here. Let's Cash Out is such a great opener. Yeah. And then we, we go into Full Disclosure a little bit later. And I actually read that uh, Pachotto said that um, Full Disclosure and Strange Light were actually the same song at the beginning before they started recording, which is yeah, I weird came across because that today they, as well. they're not yeah. even close at all in sound, which kind of brings up the idea of, you know, the whole allure of Epic Problem about the fact that yeah. they had that song for like 20 years or something and never actually been able yeah. to figure it out. So. You know, these songs are always in flux. I've seen lots of live videos of Fugazi playing songs that are like combined together or mixed, you know, like pulled apart. Yeah. Guy also told Pitchfork that they work like Legos. He said that's really the way that we work. We assemble stockpiles of parts and ideas and then we just keep clicking them together until something works. I think it's impossible to explain to people who don't know this band inside and out how it actually works. I mean, first of all, they go into the studio, they bring in a bunch of ideas, they workshop them. They're messing around. You know, this isn't just some band that goes in and has a song ready to go. This band is a band that goes in and is like artists that put this painting together as a collaborative effort. And I always wonder what these songs could have been or or ended up being. Like, there's so many possibilities, right? If you listen to the instrument soundtrack, there's songs on there that end up being on this album and on end hits and bits and pieces that you can hear in the mix. So one thing that came to mind for me was the song The Kill, which is uh, Joe Lally wrote and sings on. I mean, that one, you can see where it started, that funky bass line. So where it actually got from there is just mind-blowing. That's definitely one of the, one of the songs that comes up on the playlist that I always like. Kind of stop and have to look at my phone while I'm landscaping or whatever, and just be like, "Oh, it's, it's the kill again," because <laughs> it like seems fresh every time you listen to it. This is this very strange record. I mean, there's no other songs like "Argument." There's no other song like that in the world. There's no other song like these are all songs that you don't really have a lot of peers or, or anybody that does the same kind of stuff. No. And you know, even some of the vocals, it's like there's really weird subdued vocals uh, on a couple of the songs from Ian. Guy's always had really weird vocals, but even on this album, there's a couple where they're pulling in every single breath in the recording. Mm -hmm. So as he's singing, it's like... There's so much melody on this album amongst the yeah. amongst the loudness. So the question to you is, I mean, what bands do you see as being direct successors of this album? I mean, like this album 
did it change the scope of well i think by the time this album came out the bands that were going to be directly influenced by fugazi were already going and in, yeah. and in some senses breaking up right about about now too mm-hmm. we've talked about unwound and i, I think unwound's a, a really good example of a band that watched what fugazi was doing and did, did their own thing but they had the sort of same template but then i didn't go back and listen to your other fugazi episode but is there a band that's been more influential than fugazi yeah but not a band as good as fugazi <laughs> yeah but you could argue bands like nirvana i mean even sonic youth would be a good sort of parallel but i don't know i almost feel like they influence me for sure yeah. when i play music i always i always like think about ian's guitar playing and how there's just no rules or boundaries he just basically he can just hit his strings he can like i'm learning a lot of like really cool noisy stuff right now and like just making the guitar sing with moving it around mm-hmm. and that's all stuff that i learned by watching listening to him but i don't oh, think totally. there's a lot of bands are sitting down saying oh you know like my biggest influence is fugazi i don't know maybe they are but i think in in a in a generational way mm-hmm. i mean both of us being in the music scene or anybody who's in the music scene kind of knows this about the uh ian mckay who sits on your shoulder when you're trying to make a decision about about your band yeah and it's like what would what would ian do yeah everywhere from some local band in in a, in a small town america to the foo fighters all probably take that little ian mckay and i yeah. keep it showed up and like figure out is this a, a smart move for my band like yeah. am i doing this for the right reasons let's talk a bit about the lyrics mm-hmm. in epic problem where he uses the telegram structure with stop mm-hmm. that's a really cool thing first time i heard it i was like this is awesome yeah very clever Any lyrics that stood out for you? The temper tantrum by Guy on full disclosure. That's the one that that like stuck out. Is that there's like such a panic to it. That's a lot of the like breathing in, like where he's like <laughs> you can hear him like yeah struggling to for for air. Do you mean in the lyric sheet where it says I want out times a thousand? Did yeah. You see that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> that part. <laughs> Right near the end of the album is the one that kind of just sits with me after every time I listen to it, and I guess has been sitting with me for decades now, but it's an argument where he says, uh, Ian says, it's all about strikes now, so here's what's striking me, that some punk could argue some moral ABCs, while people are catching what bombers release, while I'm on a mission to never agree. (laughs) You know, that could be the tombstone. (laughs) Uh, yeah, um, that's funny because as you were saying that, I was like, I was like, oh, I think I, I know the the line you're gonna say because yeah. I can hear it all the time. The other one I thought was interesting for life and limb is that um, Guy wrote that with Bridget in mind. I guess they had worked together in a couple bands. One of the songs has 
Ski, Ian, and Joe all harmonizing at the same time, which I've never never heard them do that before on any record. Yeah, especially on this album. They don't fall into a stale category or a stale like mold of themselves, mm-hmm. right? They write the song how the song needs to be written. Whatever it takes to get that song done, that's great. I always thought it was a bit of a flop as far as the reviews and stuff go, but it got amazing reviews and it's been on all these best of lists over the years too. I don't know why why I thought that it was maybe because it was just so different and I thought maybe people wouldn't appreciate that. It's sort of like with Red Medicine when it came out, it was just like so different than in on the Kill Taker. So maybe I just assumed yeah. that, you know, it wasn't received well, but the reviews that I read were just glowing. But I think this is a slow burner album. Like this isn't the first one that I would have listened to. I came to it quite quite a bit later. Mm-hmm. Now it's probably the one I go back to the most, so did you go to the show in Victoria when they? Oh were... no, I was. I went to the one in Vancouver. It was really cool to see them play these songs live. With yeah. Jerry Busher, uh, second drums and percussion, and just him being wild and dancing around and using all kinds of sticks and brushes and shakers, and it was a really cool addition to the band. Yeah. Unfortunately, that was the only time we got to see them. You saw them a few times. I uh, saw them one other time at the Plaza of Nations in Vancouver uh, on the in right. on the Kill Taker tour. And there was a show in Burnaby that I should have gone to, but I had to come home. <laughs> All right. Supposedly that show was really awful. The sound was horrible because it was in a hockey arena. A lot of jerk-offs were there causing trouble. So it was one of those shows where not a lot of music really got played. Right. The album is, the fact that I've listened to it four or five times a day in the last few days just kind of says it all. 11 songs on there, including the intro, but every song is just so different. Nothing drags, nothing, you know, there's a couple songs that I'm not like 100% stoked on. Like I'm not a huge fan of the song O, which is a bit weak in the context of this album, but like how good is X Spectator with the two drums? How good is uh, Night Shop for a quieter song? How good is Full Disclosure? How good is Strange Light? How good is The Kill? Like, they're just all such bangers, right? Epic problem. Yeah. It's just front to back. It all intertwines. That's the one thing that I found with End Hits and this one is the tracking of the songs are are fantastic. They work really well. In fact, most Fugazi albums track really well. Yeah. Thought about not as singles, but as like a as a whole. Argument is the perfect closer to that. Just thinking about the progression of, of them over the years to this album. Yeah. I mean, it's the same band. You you can tell that it's the same band, but it's also so much more. And, and there's a guitar sweep in Night Shop that could be almost the same as the Margin Walker one. You know, yeah. it just goes in from there to this like orchestral guitar noodle thing that you would never have heard back in Fugazi's yeah. early days. It's like almost like symphonic or something. told me hey this is fugazi and played that orchestral part i would just laugh and said that's not fugazi that's like what is that yeah. so it's really cool that they've progressed so much do you want to do some youtube comments it's always fun yeah let's do it this is from edwin m2376 and it was three years ago and this is a bit weird okay here we go written and recorded before the dark 911 incident fugazi's masterpiece and beautiful closing before they decided to go for hiatus The argument tells the story of the life that continues in the world of corporate America, which is greedy, fast-paced, and uncomfortably structured. For me, the argument is a smart album that only leaves one clear message. Doomsday, survive, drown without fire, or fight back. The part that scares (laughs) me is the drown without fire. (laughs) I don't know why. (laughs) All right, this one is from Jag NFL eight years ago. And it says, Whoever had never heard this album, found it on YouTube, and listened to it all the way through. Your life starts today. (laughs) I like that one. 
Uh, this <laughs> one's Tetcom five years ago. All capital letters. Dude, this sounds so amazing so far. Well, I'm loving these guys. Just got into them today, so it's a big deal. <laughs> Could you imagine like listening to <laughs> just finding the argument on YouTube and just it's the first time you've heard Fugazi and you got to wrap your head around that and then have to deep dive go backwards. Yeah, this one's my favorite and I'm sure that we can both relate yeah. to it. it says Emerson Smithereens 2094 five years ago. I have a hard time deciding if this is Fugazi's best album or if all their albums are their best album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I'd probably say that this is their best album. The more, I, the more I've listened to it this week, the more it really feels like a whole when it comes down to it. Because they're getting so much better and better and because they're changing their sound and always rewriting the next album like Bad Religion or something or doing the same thing over and over again. They're yeah. progressing and they're getting better. So, I mean, it would make sense that their last album is their best. I have a really soft spot for In On The Kill Taker just because that, that was my record, right? But I do see that progression and how each, if you really yeah. look at it with an open mind without really taking into account the nostalgia aspect and hits and the argument of their best albums. Obviously, Waiting Room, like if you think about that song, you're going to say their first album's the best, but really they've just progressed so much. And I'd love to hear what they've been doing in their basement. Yeah. I would assume they're working on new stuff in the basement just for fun, but I just can't imagine what that would be now. It would be really cool. It would be very experimental, I think. Yeah. It's just nice to know that they're doing it, that they haven't completely stopped playing music together. It'd be like yeah. if you and I were in a band for 20 years, which would be awesome. And then we just decided to stop, but we never actually yeah. got together <laughs> again and played for fun. And that would have been super sad. So I'm just stoked that they are. And yeah. I mean, if this is the last Fugazi album, I'm fine with that. I mean, it could be the best album they would ever write. So there's no point to think, oh, well, there's another even better album in them. This could be it. This could be it. And going back to that, them still playing and not playing out that's the foundation of enjoying what and doing it for the the right reason you're not doing it to go sell some pieces of merchandise or whatever you're just in there to like hang out with yeah. your buds and play music so that's that's rad so if you want to listen to more episodes of the flex your head podcast we do have a bunch of them on the scream therapy website so screamtherapyhq.com and also the main podcast is there as well, which is about punk rock and mental health. So ScreamTherapyHQ.com, HQ as in headquarters. If you want to check out what I'm up to with my book and the podcast, it's all there at that same website. The book did come out in May and it's been doing quite well. People seem to like it. So go and grab a copy if you so desire. Thanks a lot for doing this, Drew. It was fun to talk about. That just zipped by. I feel like we just started talking, but <laughs> it's the kind of record we could talk about forever. So Yeah, there's so many things about this band that we could have deep dove in. But yeah, thanks to talk about this album because it is awesome. <laughs>